So, uh, hi, Kasish. Good evening. Uh, so, we were actually waiting for a few more participants to join in. Uh, but before that, uh, I have a really quick question for you. Uh, so, what do you think uh, is your take on today's topic? Because I think you've been uh, doing a lot of awareness uh, webinars like these uh, uh, quite recently. And I'm really looking forward to your insights on uh, how, you know, uh, you would be taking forward uh, today's topic. So, what do you, what do you suggest? Hi, thank you. Thank you for the question and thank you for introducing me, Abhishek. Um, I think this topic is very much close to each and every's heart, uh, you know, everybody's heart. Why? Because we aren't we all social animals, like even the ones who prefer their own company, enjoy their own company over the others. We still need this emotional connection, this support and all of us somewhere somehow are struggling with it. Let's be honest, it's not like hunky-dory in life. Yeah. So it's 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 been that and that's why this this particular topic is always very it's always very fresh to me no matter how much have I done the readings on no matter how much have I talked about it it's always good to you know spread knowledge and gain knowledge from people how their connections are doing. Right. I think our uh, previous wellness Wednesday session uh, also talked a lot about uh, you know having. Uh, uh, healthy well-being habits and uh, I think that's where a lot of our uh, attendees uh, peak interest uh, in, in knowing what you would have to say about uh, you know today's session and I think that's why we've been uh, having a larger turnout uh, of, of attendees than the previous session today and it's, it's a great response uh, so thank you so much for everyone who's been joining in right now and uh, I'll take this opportunity to now introduce our uh, panelists and then we'll take it forward from here. Uh, so, a very good evening to everyone. Uh, this is Kashish Kaur uh, with me in On Surety is exclusive with uh, Wellness Wednesday. And uh, today we have her uh, talking about cultivating connections and how to foster healthy relationships at both work and at your personal life, right? So, we have Kashish who holds a Master in uh, Psychology from Amity University in Noida. She is a Certified CBT and a Transactional Analysis Practitioner. Uh, Kashish focuses majorly on handling cases pertaining to relationships, anxiety and uh, people, uh, you know, going through motivational issues. And let's just say Kashish's uh, values are really deeply rooted towards being a person who is committed to self-care and is also committed to sharing uh, you know this 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 sort of a skill to all her clients right and today we have her uh, you know enlightening all of us on uh, on our wellness Wednesday session about uh, you know cultivating good relationships and more importantly how do you do that both in work and your personal space so thank you so much, Kashish, for joining in today. It's been a great honor to have you here. And I think uh, we're going to have a great time learning a lot of new things today, uh, like always. And uh, really looking forward to your insights. And uh, before we, uh, before I let you take over, uh, we'll be having a 15-minute uh, Q&A session towards the end of the webinar uh, for our panelists to ask any sort of questions that they would have. Uh, regarding today's session and uh, over to you thank you so much thank you so much Abhishek that was a very very lovely and uh, very heartwarming introduction I welcome each and everyone from Onshority for taking out time and investing rather than not taking out investing your time in something that is so meaningful and absolutely so important in our day-to-day -day life right so I will just start presenting my screen and we will begin um, I would love to have all of you on board with very, uh, very interactive questions and says and answers. If uh, because I don't, I I love to talk, but I would not love to talk all by myself. I would want you all to take equal participation. All right. So um, we are talking about cultivating connectedness, and you know, as we begin, I just have a little activity for you all to begin with. All right. So why don't um, you know you all text a person in your life that you feel connected to, you are connected to already about something that you like about them. Now this is something that we will 
do right in the beginning and we will you know bear the fruits of it towards the end of the session so hang in there with me but let's just begin with this something that we want to start with any person any any relative any friend any cousin any sibling anybody from work absolutely anyone that you feel most connected with or you would like to appreciate them for the work they've done or the way they are connected to you anything so just pick up your phones whatsapp them send them a voice note and please do let me know if you have done it and you know what have you shared with them if you are comfortable i mean anything what are you grateful to them to this particular person and just share it with them let them know all right i can see some thumbs up a few thumbs up abhishek will the audience be able to interact through the chat yes yes so uh, while all of you are working on the task given by kashif if mm. any of you have any kind of doubt please feel free to put it up on the chat yeah right because we have a we we have like a lot of questions like this where i will be asking you to do certain things to help me understand your relationships better your connections better so if we have done this which is very very good if you all have done this and now let's just connect get to the point wherein you tell me what comes to your mind when you think about connectedness what are these words four five words that come to your mind when we say connectedness I can't see the responses. If they are typing something because I'm receiving some They're saying chat is disabled. You try folks again. Yeah. yeah, now we can. Yeah, trust. Hi. Hello, so lovely. All of us can talk, yeah. okay joy mobile phone <laughs> what does connectedness mean to you just just say it out loud in in few words if you can there's a little jumble also given on the screen if you know some word resonates with you understanding absolutely love okay all right joy a lot of us have written joy okay what about the rest care of course yes that means connectedness yeah understanding each other gossip truth lovely let them let them pop in let just let's just know from each other what connectedness feels uplifting empathy humanity slack group of course the the social media works a lot compassion nice nice our home oh beautiful i'm just loving it that compassion is right here popping in the screen hai na Okay so as we move on as we move ahead now that you tell me what connectedness means to you i want you to know no matter what we say connectedness means connectedness as much as is required by all of us to bear with us or you know to stay with us or it helps us live our lives connectedness is very much important for our overall health as well right now when we see some responses it's more of like you know that that need of belongingness that we have for each other that talk and that chit chat and that expression and that sharing but what uh, i don't know if we you guys have seen the video but we here talk about tons and millions of researchers have given a stamp that you know there is a overall health development overall health is ensured if we have social connections now here there are some researches which talk about that making social relationships affects our overall health physical health biological health also it's because of the connectedness you know when covid happened all of us were in major distress right it was just a fear of everything i keep on telling how life has changed within 2 years one month we were keeping the stuff outside for 2 to 4 hours then washing vegetables and baking soda for 2 to 4 hours and then cooking them and consuming them salads were out of picture because we can't eat to cook and eat 
so you know this this was a terrible time for all of us and we we have been i mean some of us have been through very worst scenarios and some of us have also felt grateful and blessed that we have managed it quite quite better and quite you know effectively or resilient with enough resilience now that's what also research suggests that you know people who had social connections during the time of covid-19 or were affected with corona their stress levels were reduced they were not as anxious or as worried as the people who were feeling alone feeling lonely i also had some of my you know colleagues staying alone my, one of my college friends was staying alone it was like every day it was like it's my duty to talk to her because i don't know what is she going through and that is what research has also shown lastly research has also shown that loss of connectedness can lead to burnout if you do not have an area where you can speak and talk and share so that leads to overall exhaustion not just mental but also physical so if you do not have an area where you can just express and build this bond the the effect is seen on us over our biological self as well so all in all if i say a crux of it it is a social health determinant it defines what health we are in and you know one of the researchers i also uh, i also studied said that lack of social connections is as worse as obesity crisis that you know america face or we are facing currently and high blood pressure sugar levels also worst case scenario smoking it's that bad if you do not have social connections that is the atrocity that we are we are going into that's that's the kind of mental state we are developing so social connectedness is equal or it's directly proportional to our physical well-being to our health now this is something i don't know if we knew or we just got to know through this very prominently been there it's been years and years of study in Uh, Kashish, I think your microphone is getting a little blocked. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe if you could adjust it. Is it better now? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah? Okay. All right. So as we talk about uh, as we talk about that social connectedness, connectedness in general is overall determinant of our physical health, of course mental health but also biologically. You know, our blood pressure, sugar levels, our stress levels and all of those things. Now as we move ahead I want to understand that this is something we know all right this is something that you have come with and you have already done it with a couple of people that you've met what makes you feel connected to someone what are those factors that makes you feel connected what does the person do or you do or you have in compatibility that makes you feel connected also how do you express it what is your way of if i would say in a, in a more uh, psychological term what is your love language not like romantic love but what is your language of 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 sharing this love that you have for someone so i i want the chat box to be popping again eyes <laughs> so sweet jisha confidence that we have people whom i can connect according to the situation okay i think that's the answer to the previous question All right. Please please let them come. Keep typing your responses in the chat and if we do this together, I mean towards the end we will have more takeaways to go home with. All right. What makes you feel connected to someone and how do you express it? How do you express that, Jisha? Do you only compliment or what do you do? I think my love language would be uh to uh be able to share my most comfort food with someone. If mm-hmm. I really want to show that you know I'm connected to someone. Mhm. Yeah, okay. All right, words. Does that also mean that as social beings uh we look forward to creating safe spaces for ourselves? Mhm. we do we do of course somewhere we don't feel safe or be shake i'm i'm not likely to be there for longer if you constantly keep on uh, commenting taunting or you know expressing something that i'm not good at or you know probably pulling me down 
definitely i'm i'm going after a certain point trying hard and hard i am going to leave that space because it surrounds me with some kind of uh, uh energy which is not welcoming yeah facial expression words with emotions by greeting with a smile taking responsibilities when you are unavailable okay to be able to communicate comfortably without being judged of course non judgmental is a space that all of us are craving for hai na if if a person does not judge me and takes me as i am i think that's one of the happy moments that we have when in conversations people don't judge us about what we share with them let let all the rest of you also keep uh, answering uh, meanwhile also why don't you reflect on this way of how do you express people when you feel connected to them just in the beginning we have done an expression exercise we have expressed people why do we like them or what do we like them uh, why do we like them for now moving ahead i also want to understand what are we struggling with this is something we know मैं कनेक्ट कैसे करती हूँ मैं एक्सप्रेस कैसे करती हूँ मुझे प्यार अच्छा कैसे लगता है बट वाई आर वी हेयर इफ यू आर अटेंडिंग दिस सेशन विद मी आई एम श्योर वी आर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू सम काइंड ऑफ यू नो सम काइंड ऑफ टिप्स ट्रिक्स और वट एवर जो भी आप कहना चाहते हैं टू इम्प्रूव आर कनेक्शन है ना टू इम्प्रूव आर फ्रेंडशिप और आर रोमांटिक रिलेशनशिप और टू डू समथिंग विच इज अ चैलेंज which is a barrier in smooth connectivity so what is that for you i also see somebody's written gifts and friendly nature okay jisha says fear fear is the is what you're struggling with fear of getting judged yeah jisha has been very active thank you jisha we think that what will people what people will think about me of course fear of being judged yeah what what else are we struggling with what else are we struggling with uncertainty of life peace definitely peace within two people or within a group definitely uncertainty of life yes it's so unpredictable what about you abhishek would you like to share what are you struggling with if there is anything anxiety yeah what makes you feel anxious in a relationship mm i think uh, the fact that uh, there is a lot of pressure to communicate right and mm. and to be able to communicate your innate emotions in the correct manner i think that's the basis of any relationship because when uh, people are anxious they actually struggle to express what they are really feeling and i think that's where uh, creating healthy boundaries plays a great role wonderful wonderful okay we also have a few responses uh, lack of knowledge accepting the way we are this is something we've been struggling with which brings us all together today at the wellness wellness day where we want to understand if these are the things that we know kaise relationship banana hai maintain karna hai still something that we are struggling is with the transcription of it the interpretation of it though we we'll know all of this we don't know how to do it or how to maintain it how to build it somewhere where it is lost correct that those are some things that we are struggling with so as we move ahead this is something that we are going to work on today understanding the challenges you have already written in the chat box all of us have a need of belongingness all of us want to belong to someone but we also want to understand that it's it's safe area for me it's not being judged it's something that i am i am comfortable in right so to build that connection this need needs to be fulfilled wherein we need to belong but considering the fact that how do we build it if there is a human be a uh, human need of connecting to someone what are the ways in which we can do this which we will understand in the verbal non verbal communication and also this is the support that we want no matter how good you are with you know being self sufficient or being independent or leading your life the way you want to but with certain kind of emotional supports in our life we tend to 
you know overcome challenges in a very smooth manner in a better manner when we seek for help and when we ask for support in something that we are probably not acing at correct so as we as we move on ahead these are the some these are some of the things that we need to build to make our connections this need of belongingness more fruitful more efficient and effective something that all of us need to practice is not here to respond but here to listen to absorb to make that person feel okay you have my attention and i am hearing you so an active part of listening where you show your curiosity but not in a way that you want to be like too in invested in them or you want to like poke in their business but curiosity in understanding their feeling you know sometimes all of us when are going through something what we need at that moment is just a shoulder to cry on especially on those moments when we identify such thing people just want you to hear not to advise not to give them certain jargons not to give them some motivational speeches but just listen to them and probably then comes in the part where we want you and them to empathize empathize in a sense wherein we want to put ourselves into that picture and understand if they are feeling this what makes it why are we reaching to why are they reaching to that stage what where are they coming from that they are saying all these things because if you actively listen to them i i i can i can share this with you for the person who's sharing empathy is the connection that we both will build and we both will come into picture empathy is a connection wherein wherein you and i will feel like we are on the same page that's what the connection makes it like look like and then it's not always about you know validating a person if you think ke are ye to hamesha aise karte hai so it will be like i am uh, i'm appreciating something that i am you have to be honest in relationships it could be your partners doing something wrong your children your colleagues your workers if you are if you are that bit honest to them you will not only help yourself take out that burden but you will also help that person understand what is happening to them it's not like you know kaise all of us have some of us have also must have done it when somebody is stressed the first thing that we say okay let's grab a drink theek ho jayega are or sleep over it or you know what let's just watch a movie i know it's very easy it's 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 a wonderful wonderful distraction but you know what the more you delay it to address it the more the damage becomes so if we are honest about what we are speaking and why if we are hearing someone if we really want them to talk to them then also sharing with them your honest replies or honestly what you would have said or done it it works wonders in terms of understanding each other's page understanding each other's side so it's not just like we we i want you to do to support i'm here to support with that reality check lastly we have the four c's of communication first is clarity when we actively listen if you think you have assumed something if you think there is something that you have not probably understood clearly or if the person has not expressed it in a very correct manner you have all the means to ask question and clarify them you know this comes into picture very much when there are misconceptions happens a lot with partners happens a lot with great great friends wherein because of some lack of clarity ni tumne aise kiya tha tumne aise socha tha very common factor to to make one small thing a big huge fight with plans up into some you know some connections getting broken also 
so clarity within the parties within the two people is very important be it any kind of relationship even if it is work it is at work if you feel there is some not clarity with your colleague or your boss or somebody uh, in your team member then you can always go up and clarify it which is not a harm one is courtesy it's sometimes that we forget that when are we you know using this authority over people we forget to be kind to people when you're talking to them especially when we uh, when we see, when we look at it like i am somebody which who is more responsible or i am more accountable or i am more accomplished we don't understand this bit wherein we come into picture and we just ridicule that short of that matter with our own uh, ego so courtesy is one thing the politeness that you talk with the way you talk with makes a huge amount of difference when people talk to each other so even if i'm scolding you but i'm talking to you like you know what this disappointed me and i wasn't expecting this to go it this way or probably how can we work on it better this is also a way of scolding rather than like bash 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 yap 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 you know we have done all those then there is concise Conciseness is just being clear, short, and crisp to understand these things. Wherein, when we are talking to people, we don't have to write all the lecture format, but we just have to be short and crisp to make them understand what we are talking and how we want to communicate it. Lastly, is the correctness. This is something that is uh, that that can be more relatable in the matter of professional area, where we do not receive correct information because some. has said something and the other has said something so verify the is the kind of correctness we are looking for is the kind of uh kashish i think we're not able to hear you because of uh, your microphone i think when you're looking in the front it's more clearer Okay. So probably, yeah. It's just. Uh, All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Abhishek, if it's for like one minute or longer, just drop me a sooner, uh, you know, reminder that I'll address myself. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So yeah. So correctness is something wherein we disclude, we not include the wrong information, but we want to speak out things which are valid and have uh, the correct amount of uh, you know information that we want to deliver. Now these are the four C's of communication that all of us must follow in our day-to-day -day life to avoid conflicts, to avoid you know any kind of differences that might occur because of communication. Now this is not a less uh, less thing when we say a lot of the conflicts or fights that we have anywhere in any relationship comes from the way you communicate. It's either your tone, it's either your pitch, it's either the words you use. or it's either the wrong information that has been delivered right so these are four c's that each one of you can keep in mind and as we move ahead we have talked about verbal communication right we have talked about how can we speak how can we communicate how does that work now i want to talk about non verbal communication as well right here just through facial expression so we are going to play a game i'm going to show you some pictures and um, I'm going to show you some pictures and I want you to guess what this picture is trying to tell you. All right? Okay, so the first picture is this. What do you think this picture is saying? What do you think this this girl with a yellow background look shocked, surprised, unexpected, shocked, shocked, aghast, okay? Shocked, surprised, shocked, surprised, shocked, surprised. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. OMG what has happened yeah so that's the power of expression you all that's the power of expression so it, we might not be as loud as she is like humme se koi aise nahi karta jab hum surprise karte hai but we still do something very nearer to it but we're like oh, what has just happened right so this is the kind of non verbal communication that we follow okay somebody has also interpreted it as wow uh, <laughs> that's that's your nice perspective towards it but i think the eyes talk about more of like she's surprised in a way um also surprised in a good way that's also possible 
next i have one cute little guest for you which uh, you must tell me what emotion is this what emotion is this sadness sad sad oh innocence lonely sad love deep thinking okay <laughs> missing someone sorrow depressed sad worried yeah absolutely it could be any any worried sad yes of course innocence yeah cathartic yes okay okay hungry <laughs> okay mega <laughs> definitely blank all right now you know if 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 a cute little puppy like this can express an emotion you know they they, they never had language they still can't talk like right? but we still understand the way they behave with the way they enact with you at home that's the joy or the sorrow where it comes from so this is the power of non verbal communication which all of us almost always under it we don't understand it sometimes the way we have been uh, physically uh, facially behaving we we don't think that's a that's a bigger thing to understand or not to understand something to consider or not to consider so this little puppy is definitely sad or you know uh sad or worried or lonely some of the sorts wherein he's just not happy with whatever has happened to this cute little little being here next this is something you must have seen on all the meme channels Ugh. have you or have you not something all of us have uh, felt it also in our real life hai na anger okay victory face angry got it success i made it feeling of accomplishment ah angry nailed it i can do it yes i did it revenge yes yes i got this i got it yes i made it oh lovely of course this is one of the famous meme faces now why have i picked this one and i want you to understand you know how we are creating memes but we're just putting a picture it's either drake or it's either somebody else or or a little child because that is talking the way this expression would have worked this is one of the ways sometimes only our expression is the response and not our communication sometimes it's not the words or the courtesy but just like how we felt it and we just put it out on our face right so this here we are talking about building rapport through your non verbal communication skills this man right here became very famous from the pakistan match and his entire body right now is expressing something hai na it's it's talking something to me and to you and we have used his this image in in um, so many memes like it's it's uncountable so just look the expressions that we talk about the way you behave so like just like we have guessed a few emotions it's just the way i am doing in my physical is my eyes closed my eyebrows up my mouth how is it shaping all these things then there is paralinguistics wherein we talk about the the language through our face wherein we talk about it in the sense wherein we want the space to be in the body language that we talk about just look at the body language of this man and it's like ah ye fir se nahi kiya tumne it's that kind of vibe that he's delivering and we've used him so many times i guess just the way we look at people now if you would have been in front of me like in an offsite session the way i would have looked to each one of you would have made more of a connection between the audience and myself right so this is the kind of eye gazing or sight sight vision that we use when we are communicating to people you can have look them in the eye when you know when people say you look them in the eye when you're angry it's very very uh it's very very nightmarish it's not something good and sometimes when you are you have you're wrong you've done something terrible and somebody is hurt we generally look down we don't um, and to show respect also we generally look down we don't look in the eye but eye gaze in general the sight we use is very much important in the way we are expressing paying respects or feeling connected sending a signal it's that i i look at you you look at me and like hi hi that's what it does 
then there is kinesics kinesics is the kind of space i have the what kind of space area am i utilizing am i too close am i too far the touch that i am doing all of that how how does my body my non verbal senses speak to me all right so as we talk about these non verbal expressions may i know from from all of you what is in what is in the non verbal sense that you all have been practicing a lot you know some of us have also that sense wherein we are like her face is always so annoyed like she's one annoyed person every time she sits like that or he sits like that i don't know but i have met such a person and if you have also met just please raise your hands or let me know in the chat box if you have ha- met some people who have had the same kind of expression throughout the day and through which you understand ki abhin ke sath kya guzar raha hoga that's what we what we do and we don't talk to them if they are too angry something i do with my parents at least if they are already very angry i just don't go and talk <laughs> yeah okay and now as we have done this one uh this thing of understanding why what is that we need to build these connections to maintain them to interpret our feelings towards them these were some ways that we understood i also want to ask what makes you feel disconnected or uncomfortable with someone sometimes wherein you are like i'm just done this is not me i can't do it it's it's just not my cup of tea what is that for you what is that discomfort disconnection or you know something wherein you are like this is way beyond my scope i don't want to do it what makes you break that connection disrespect okay the choice of words that they use yeah expectations okay rude attitude rudeness okay okay communicate ego ego ignorance hurting that puts us off these all feelings this kind of a thing in a relationship when happens it just puts us off it just sends us to a side and we're like i don't want to do this i don't want to talk to this person and if it happens time and again we are also like i just don't want to do this anymore this connection for me is not working and these are some of the energy vampires that i want to talk about if you have felt these like we had in the chat box some of us have felt these dishonesty cheating betrayal trust issues not fulfilling what they committed lack of commitment all of this it comes under dishonesty and dishonesty pulls us off emotionally and like mentally in terms wherein we don't trust this person anymore and it's in future we are not even expecting too much from them if somebody is time and again dishonest with you and not working the way they promised to there's there's a lack of connection already wherein you don't want to tell them something or you don't ask them for something or anything especially on the terms of emotional touch we don't expect them to do or be there for you disrespect this was this also came up in the chat sometimes the fights get so trashy so dirty that we don't understand what we are speaking in that time some of us may abuse some of us may throw things some of us just may shout and howl not say something very inappropriate but some of us really disrespect and it's not just limited to words but it's also limited to actions extended to actions dependency all of us if have a if develop a habit of emotionally depending upon people or people emotionally depending on us ke tum nahi karoge to hum nahi karenge aur you are there so i am there that kind of an obligation from people also makes us makes our a struggle with the relationship that we are in we do not feel very very you know we do not feel aligned with their vision our ground stone match and that is where the dependency factor irritates us makes us cringe there is dispute dispute is something as small as differences of opinion i disagree to something you agree or my my level of uh, my my level or my understanding is way too different in some matters as compared to yours this happens a lot when people come with two various varied fields 
through varied uh, you know upbringings experiences and then they come and make contact for certain new thing that has come up something a prime example if people can relate parents vision to a child's understanding child asking for permission or you know we making them understand certain things about our life and the parents will not understand it's a conflict of opinions my mindset is way too different than yours these are some things which hamper our quality of relationship disrupt it and make it very exhausted now if you are feeling some of these things or any of these things these are some things that we need to imply or apply on our own selves the art of saying no now there are different kinds and ways of which we can say no to people something which is very prominent is the direct no that i want to say to you right i do not uh, i i just will say no i can't do this can you go for lunch with me no i can't do this and then there is also a let me get back to you something that i will answer it once i return okay and examples are given right here i just have to look at my calendar and i'll get back to you the whole criteria is set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm and keep your own cup to you know understand make make someone else understand or make them feel happy about it the indirect no look i want to join for drink but i have to work on something or my kids need to sleep on time or i need to be somewhere in the morning anything just a valid excuse for them to understand that it's a no it's a clear no from your side and then there is no with them okay you know how much i would love to have lunch with you but can we have it tomorrow i can't do this right now you show your respect and love for whatever they have asked for but if you can't do it at that time you just let them know we'll do it later then there is the i versus you statements it's it's high time we we put ourselves into picture when we are talking rather than blaming or victim uh, or victim playing ourselves rather than blaming somebody else for how you are feeling rather than we should use something something that we say very commonly is you should have asked me first or you made me angry or you did this to me and a pure polite response to that would be i would be happy if you could have asked me before going or you know i feel disappointed when you did this or that which actually made you angry and something some some examples wherein you feel what you're feeling and you express it in that manner rather than blaming it on a person and pulling him or her down in what you you are feeling all right this is one of the ways in how we can communicate with cordialness in with empathy to each other something else that has been very prominent is understanding what is solvable and what is persistent some problems in our life are pretty pretty solvable like you know if uh, both the parents are working and child needs to be be on something else and or rather if you both are uh, you know you're having a clash of project in the with the timeline in the office time there is a midway where you can solve the problem or there are some problems which are persistent sometimes some things with the people uh, with somebody else's nature is something we can't do anything about that's a perpetual problem it's going to persist something like covid when had happened people had a lot of conflict but we couldn't do something about it what can be done is something as in if you are working the whole day and you have a problem with that i can probably divide that work so understanding which problem is solvable and actually meeting at a midpoint to solve it that is one of the ways in which we decrease our conflict levels lastly that we had here is space and time off um in my in in my introduction it was told i'm a fan of self care it's not just because i go to manis and pedis and spas i just like my own space in the day wherein i can disconnect with people the appliances the social media and i can feel what is going in my head if somebody had put me off during the day time i have this time and space to let me understand it this is like you having your own space or being in other space kashish we lost your voice again yeah am i audible yes 
I'm just saying. I was just continuing to say there is space. Sometimes all of us need that time for ourselves, that energy for ourselves in our own mind and in our own life. And please be proud to utilize it. It's it's you who is going to take you ahead. You know, I I have read it a lot of times and I've told this to people. The only only relationship that you will have for your life is yours with your own self. there is no matter how long your friendships are or how empathetic and good they are still there is nobody is going to stay with you as much as you are going to so some things that we need to check on in our uh, com- in our uh, connections is red flags versus green flags we have all of us have understood things about how somebody needs to be stay away from you know those uh, uh, those times when we were just starting off with relationship having crushes on people and then we are like our friends telling us there are so many red flags how can you be with this person but then there are also so many green flags in a person those are the signs for us to maintain connections with them green flags of a person could be something like they are considerate of your needs they understand when you talk they communicate problems to you they they are always there to solve rather than to fight over it you know these are some green flags that we are unaware about and one wrong thing happens and our mind is completely disturbed then there is quality versus quantity some of us might have loads and loads of friends but we are still lonely when we are in a problem in thick and thin we do not have those people and some of us have two or four friends but these friends can do the worldly comforts for me like they they will be there even if i call them midnight so the limit of the number of people we are connected with also helps us in making our connection stronger which is because we put and invest our time at the correct time with the correct people Now imagine if you have to maintain such soulful connections with hundred people or fifty people. I mean, God give you twenty four instead of twenty four, maybe forty eight hours to do that because that's tough. Building connections is time consuming. Also, your own space is required for it. Then we have short term versus long term friendships. Sometimes uh, all of us must have read it somewhere. It's not about talking to your best friends daily. it's not about talking to your parents daily but it's the connection that matters so some of our most potential relationships can be the most important ones in my life even if i'm not connecting to them on daily basis but some people like work colleagues we meet them every day we we still might not feel very emotionally connected to them these are some things that we need to check and apart from this something that you need to keep in mind while building or maintaining these connections is the same kind of interest level you are sharing some interest and meaning in your own life this is something which is um, let's let's say it's there out wherein sometimes we ignore or we do not pay attention to it's not like two poles apart and you can't meet together but you must share something that is relevant to both of you that's actually going to be a catalyst in making this friendship or connection stronger in this relationship go stronger one thing i want you to do now is just check on your whatsapps the person you had texted to has that person responded if yes then just let me know if that person has responded If yes, if yeah, okay. HP says yes. How many of you know? Okay, okay. Um, considering HP, you have received the response to a person you had texted. How are you feeling? How does this make you feel? Sharing your expression of you liking them or liking something about them. Wonderful. And how often do we do it? This is a question to my audience. How often are we sharing with our loved ones what do we like about them what do we appreciate them for what are we grateful for them to How many times are we doing this when was the last time you guys did it When was the last time you appreciated somebody to be in your life holding you tight or you holding them tight This is one thing that I would like you all to take away today as much as from whatever we have talked about is this expression of gratitude 
it's it's not relationship or connection is not a one way street it's a two way street we need to put in some amount of effort every day within our own comfort levels to bring that connection back stronger to maintain it more smoother to to you know feel light about it not get pressurized or disturbed so gratitude is one way of making this connection go stronger on each and every day basis maybe once a month you appreciate each other or maybe it's it's okay it's okay to do that it's wonderful rather now as we close and come towards the end i want you all to reflect upon these three pointers from my side to you a person that one way that you would express your connectedness through how would you express your connectedness we have talked about multiple ways today also there are many more that you must be already applying them but i want to know one way how you would express your connectedness to people what your language of love is going to be please please type your responses in the chat if you know the answer already how will you be expressing them you can rather write the answer for all three one challenge you would want to seek support for with the partner that you are uh, expecting a support from start with a smile yeah polly that's very sweet just starting with smile greeting them well how about the rest appreciating their work thank you jisha okay i am i am waiting the responses of all the rest of you uh one challenge that you would seek support for from these people something that you are struggling with please be open and reach out to them for support and one method that you would do to make others feel comfortable from the many many ways that we have incurred in the chat box and in the presentation today what would you do to make others feel comfortable with your own self to make that connection listen carefully acknowledgement okay thank you please share in your responses all right that was that was the entire thing on building those connections i hope everyone uh, of you is taking at least one thing from here today and if somebody wants to uh, you know if somebody wants to understand more you can start by just expressing what you're feeling and listening to what people are wanting to tell you that's one thing that's one baby step towards our betterment in our own relationships and the rest all of it will come into picture one day all of it will make sense to you thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience and the energy in the chat box was massively good thank you so much for your responses over to abhishek uh thank you so much kashish uh, it was a really insightful uh, session uh, i now allow the audience to uh, put down any questions that you have for kashish in the chat box and uh, we will proceed with the q and a session now so while we have the questions in coming i think i would want to ask a question so in the beginning of the session we talked about uh uh you know creating a need for belongingness how do you suggest uh, one could do that i'm not saying we have we have to create a need there is already an existing need of belongingness we need to build on that we know we are there to belong to people now we need to work on it like i said some baby step that all of us can do is start talking also i once you finish start listening also and if somebody is uncomfortable to talk we must create that comfort for them we have polly asking what would be a good opening statement to start communication uh thank you for the question polly uh i'm no expert in how to start the conversation but something that has worked for me is just a smile Sometimes you just walk around the aisle and you smile at a person and they smile at you and then you're like oh where are you from maybe maybe that works for me the small talk 
but it's it's just a pleasant face it's just a pleasant face that has worked for me at least disha says that's worked for her, her as well thank you please uh, please pop in your questions i would be happy to answer them Okay, there's somebody who has asked me in the question answer is how to apply gratitude in the workplace. Yeah, so very very good question. I I couldn't get your name. Thank you, Shankar, for asking. Uh, something that uh, something that we need to start beginning in the workspace is appreciating the effort. You know, sometimes results may not come, which is which is very inevitable. sometimes we might not reach the target sometimes those spreadsheets will not work out for us but the effort that the person is doing the effort that is that is each one of us is applying is is one step ahead is is one of the is is one step near to the achievement that we're looking forward to appreciating work appreciating the effort at the workspace is something which is also very less talked about in workspaces we are all talking about numbers and stats and whatever is achieved we are not talking about how much effort has this pulled off you know the sales last moment they got they get cracked they are not working out the deal is cancelled but there's months of effort that has been pulled in it so sometimes it's not about the result sometimes it's about the effort that the person has made the heart and soul the sweat that they have given to the project so maybe that's one thing that we need to be more grateful about hum um, there's one more anonymous attendee who has asked how do we cope up with the social anxiety in a professional setup okay yeah so how do we cope up with social anxiety i think social anxiety is a very strong word maybe this could be someone uh, i don't know because that's a diagnosis right we need to more, talk more about it but if somebody is uncomfortable in crowd and does not want to be there or in a professional setup especially there's something that you can start with is increasing your horizon with number of people avoid getting up into 10 and 100 at one jump start making that circle start making that circle increase in a few number so if in a professional setup you are someone who feels worried does not feel comfortable sit with someone that makes you feel comfortable sit with something or some some uh, some uh, object that makes you feel comfortable talk to someone that would give that comfort to you that you are in a safe space if you are feeling anxious or worried in a large number of crowd you need to begin small if you feel worried in that sense so one day you can't just end up eating all the mirchi you have to build that resilience okay i hope i have answered. a lot of questions from ulhas asking uh, is there a way to tackle the situation where someone is not willing to listen to you mm-hmm. someone is not willing to listen to us okay so understanding i think understanding what the challenge is there if it's just not listening i mean there's there's there must have been more to it so first again empathizing with the person why would they not want to listen especially if it's coming from a perspective where uh, there's some junior colleague who's not listening or the kids don't listen to the parent we need to provide them that comfort that okay you know what you can come and talk and we will talk it's not like i will talk and you will listen i will also listen to you so it's it's not a con, it's not a lecture it's a conversation when we ask them poke them to talk probably then we can help them understand what we want them to understand what are we trying to tell them we also need to figure out what challenge is there in them not listening because some people just if they are not listening there's a bigger meaning attached to it either they don't align with it or they find it too restrictive or too controlling could be anything figuring that challenge that barrier out would help you resolve it through the many ways that 
we have talked about or we must be implying it in our day to day life all right that brings us to the end of the q and a with kashish and uh, thank you so much for such a power pack session uh, kashish it was great i think all of us have definitely experienced a lot of emotion throughout the session and i think that's what is uh, so great about uh, having uh, the wellness wednesday sessions with uh, experienced panelists like you and uh, thank you so much for giving your valuable time i think uh, we had a lot to learn about uh, creating good relationships in workplace as well as uh, personal space and uh, i think all of us have enjoyed a lot uh, really overwhelmed with the kind of activities that you have uh, planned for all of us here and i think uh, going forward our attendees would love to you know make sure that they uh, keep going back to the uh, activities that you've been talking about today in order to analyze and empathize with themselves more so thank you so much once again and uh, it was add? it was great uh, you know having you on board today thank you so much abhishek you were a great host i would like to thank on charity for this great wellness initiative and for bringing out such meaningful and insightful and practically live sessions for you all and the content they bring for their members and uh, i i i am really glad that these activities are something that i received response on so we are glad that on charity is pioneering employee healthcare and wellness brand with 2000 plus business and over 2 lakh members you are you have been a great audience to me and i hope this this session helps you cultivate the connectedness that we felt was missing somewhere thank you so much thank you so much <laughs>